this opportunity I am here with the Dr. Uh, Pils. Uh, he is an expert in botanica, botanic. Um, we are here in um, Herbarium Paul C. Stanley. Uh, today I going to we are going to talk about the Ishbut. The Ishbut is a, a plant that is used in, in Guatemala to to the by the for women that nursing nursing women to start the the production of milk when it's not present. Uh, uh, I review uh, information previous to do this and I going to do to the the doctor pills and the first is the considerations that I have to to know about the plant to domestication and consider cons considering that is a plant that pertains to Euphorbiaceous family. Mm -hmm. uh, what characteristics I I have to consider to do the domestication of, of the plant? Well, thank you very much for the interview, and we, let's look at it this way: this plant has been near humans for at least a couple of thousand years. It, it's not fully domesticated, but people have used this in gardens and it, they've gone out and collected it in the wild. So it's not a, a, an absolutely new plant, completely new. It, it's never become extremely popular and it needs a lot of research, but it, it's, it's a plant that people, some people have known about for a long time. Okay, but it's not the same. The it's not the same. Have this plant in a garden to a uh, big extension of of art to produce okay, it for it yeah. for mm -hmm. a specific. Uh, okay, these are the unknowns, because something that may be very easy to cultivate in a garden yeah. with only one or two plants, okay, seem without any problems, but. You never know if you put it into a cultivation where you've made five hectares or five yeah. manzanas of the plant. Suddenly it may attract insects and diseases that we don't know about right now. But I mean, it, it, um, it's a very sturdy plant. I don't think there'll be difficulties, but there always may be difficulties with, with putting something like this in so many together. Yeah, if we compare with, for example, Evolvia purchenima, that is the, mm -hmm. the same family, what characteristics I, I, as, are important for me? Well, in terms of what is a... For example, the production of latex to yeah. evade the insects, for uh -huh. example. This latex production is, is what's really important because most probably the active ingredients of the, of the exboot uh -huh. is in the latex, uh -huh. I would guess. Yes. I mean, no, I, it, it, it's probably within the latex because I would think that this is probably something that is moving through the plant and the latex is like the blood system of, of, the, of the plant. Okay. Um, in the taxonomic case, in the flora of Aromara, mm -hmm. uh, say that this plant can be found on free field and pine forest. Mm -hmm. the, I, I think that the, the light has a di uh, direct effect of the grow in, in the plant. Uh, what can you uh, say about this? Where I've seen it growing best is in full sunlight, but it also can grow in fairly deep shade. So I find it a plant that's very plastic, very adaptable. Um, it should be easy to cultivate. It should be. Yeah. Not for sure, but it should be. 
okay, for, for example, in, in a free year, are more light, mm -hmm. more uh, transpirations uh, with carbon. It grows faster. Okay, need more fertilizer, water, water for example. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Whereas in the darkness, it can grow slowly and... And, and the concentration of the compounds? We don't know. That's for you to discover. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, no, because there, there's... There's very. Do you think that that is the same? If are in uh, in the free yield of um, the pine forest, the concentration of the. I think it can change from morning till night. Why? It's just that a lot of these things change are very variable, and and so we know in other things it's not. It's not necessarily that it, it's going to stay the same whether it's collected in the day or collected in the night or whether it's collected in the dry season or the wet season. All of this information you need to do. Okay. This, is, this is experimentation for, for you for the future. <laughs> um, the Ishbud is a procumbent plant. Mm -hmm. For example, if I want to cultivate uh, five hectares, uh, the it'll grow sideways. Uh huh. Uh, the the reproduction uh, are more easy, more difficult. Mm -hmm. No, the it's very easy. The the plant can propagation by it. It could, but you can make it go faster by cutting and moving plants. Okay. The same. Okay, thank you for the, the information. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay, and good luck in your studies. Thank you. Okay. I had the opportunity to see this video. Uh, we are here in the chemistry lab with the expert, the Dr. Ludovic Bulli. And we are going to talk about the isolations of compounds uh, specific in each boot. Uh, first, I, <coughs> I want to start uh, talking about the different methods to isolations of extractions of different compounds in plants or other, other things. What about this? Uh, generally, it's a main method. Is, uh, which is solid liquid extraction. So your sample is solid, you know, as yeah. leaves, it can be roots, it can be um, bark, it can be whatever, what, uh, any part of the plant, and the liquid is a uh, so solvent. So it's a media uh, with which you will uh, extract your secondary metabolites, your molecules. So generally, the method which is uh, an increasing polarity method you use first an apolar solvent in order to yeah. remove only the apolar compounds like wax and hydrocarbon from your plant, for example. Oh. And after, you increase the polarity of your solvent in order to remove more polar compound of your okay. solvent. In this case, we don't know what this is the, the compound that has a specific effect how we can select the method because we know we'll, we don't know if this is polarity or not polarity when mm. we when you don't know uh, uh, i advise you to do all kind of compounds as you okay. as I, to, I tell you you know difference uh, for the yeah, same for example uh, low polarity medium polarity high polarity and in this order in this order uh, this way you will have uh, three main fractions one with, uh, uh, I would say, apolar compounds, yeah. uh, another one with uh, semi-polar compounds, and the last one with highly polar compounds. And after, what you can do with heat fraction is to do again your uh, biological test, for example, to select the fraction you will investigate after. Okay. The, sor the, sor the solvent in the process is too important. Uh, in Guatemala, the Ishbud is consumed as an infusion. I think that this can, uh, this can 
have a relation with the process of extraction, uh, can we use the water like a, a solvent? Yes, of in course. The process? It's not, it's not a bad idea. I think generally it's a very good idea because water is very cheap. Is, you know, I know, it's, it's true. It's very cheap and it's not, it's not toxic. So it's, I, I would say it's an ob obvious choice. Nonetheless, as I told you, uh, water is very, very polar. It's ha it has a high polarity, and if you compare with all the solvent that exists, it is more polar. Oh, yeah. Which, it, it can be a problem, because generally, uh, with water, you will remove only uh, highly uh, polar compounds. Okay. So I hope that uh, in each boot, yeah. uh, the, the active compound is highly polar. If, if, we, if we want to combine the action of the solvent, what other uh, chemicals can be used together with the water to... Oh, it's uh, generally, we, we can combine uh, water with an alcohol. Different process? It's the same process. Okay. A mixture of water and alcohol. Uh, generally, you can uh, add, for example, uh, for example, isopropanol. Isopropanol has a small alkyl chain with carbon atoms, yeah. and um, that means that it will have a much more apolar ability. It's soluble, it's soluble in water, but with this uh, carbon chain, it will it can solubilize also less polar compounds, which means that that's you can remove more uh, more different compounds. different compounds with the same sol the, with the same solvent. Yes, more or less. Yes. Okay. Uh, each metal has different efficiency, but what, uh, what is, is a, value, a common value of the efficiency? It depends on your uh, chemicals, on the, the natural product you are uh, looking for to extract, in fact. Uh, if you want to extract uh, cellulose, to say something, in, uh, you know, in each... Uh, material that came from plant you have a lot of cellulose which means you can have a very high yield yeah. if you look for uh, a very small molecules uh, you can have a very very low yield depend, you know, depend it, on it the depends compounds. on what you are looking for but okay. it's really common to have a less than one percent <laughs> yield very now it's very very common in this case the idea, the idea is maybe uh, now the the molecular and synthesize this yes exactly uh, this is this is a main drawback of uh, natural product chemistry uh, you only you can only extract the amount the plant wa wants to do you know a lot of plants for, <laughs> for example I have an example of uh, taxol which is a very uh, known uh, molecule that is used in uh, cancer and uh, from it was from I think one ton one ton of bark you can uh, extract only 10 milligrams of the uh, <laughs> molecule you know one ton one milligram so to 10 milligrams and that's why a uh, chemist uh, has to synthesize a molecule from you know from small yeah. molecules that deri that derivate from petroleum yeah okay uh, this booth in Guatemala is used to start the production of meal in the uh, nursery women's do you know uh, uh, synthetic uh, chemicals that are used to this purpose that maybe are similar in the murek mm. uh, to be honest i don't know <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's not a part of um, i would say medicinal chemistry i investigate i, I suppose so I suppose also it can be uh, like a, a side effect of some uh, commonly used uh, medicine of drugs. I suppose. Okay. Uh, which kind of drugs I don't know. I, I don't know either if you have a specific uh, medicine of drug uh, to, uh, to increase uh, milk production. Okay. Thank you for your time and thank you for everyone that see this video.